Hello everybody and welcome back to the journey. Recently the Stacking Surfer had me on his live stream for a bit of an interview. We had a lot of fun, had a lot of things to talk about. The interview lasted an hour and a half, two hours, somewhere in that range, and I did talk to him afterwards about doing a condensed version for this channel. And he did say it was cool with him, so that's what I did. I did edit it down to a much shorter version, and that's here for your enjoyment. I hope you all really enjoy it, and if you do want to watch the entire thing, there will be a link for that down in the description below. And don't forget to, while you're over there, you know, make sure you like and subscribe with his channel. He's got a whole lot of stuff going on, and uh, you know, let's help him grow. Let's help uh, push him along and make his journey a great one. A couple questions I had for you just kind of starting off is um, sure. how long have you been stacking for? Well, um, I'd have to say sometime in mid to late December is when I bought my first piece of silver, somewhere in that range. Um, and then, you know, I got into the whole YouTube thing in February. But uh, yeah, so somewhere sometime, I'd say sometime in December. I don't remember the exact day. But um, honestly, I never intended on stacking silver. I was uh, just uh, intending on starting this tinker with coins because I wanted something to do with my daughter. Of course, you know, you tinker with, with your coins, eventually you run into silver. And you start playing with that and you get to, you know, you get to hearing it and getting to playing with it and getting to realize, you know, you can actually find this stuff out in the wild. And, uh, you know, so it put me on the hunt for it. And now here I am 250 ounces in and I'm still going. So what, what was your goal that you originally set? So you've just said you, you've passed 250 ounces. What was your original goal you set for this year? Originally, I wanted to get 50 ounces. Um, I was, okay. my money was a little bit tighter than it is now. I didn't manage my money like I do now. And so I was figuring maybe, you know, try to squeeze out an ounce a week. Um, and at the time, silver was going for, a generic round was going for in the high 20s, maybe 30. And so I figured if I squeeze one a week, then I could hit the 50 in a year. But I think I got that, I got the 50 in less than two months, if I remember correctly, much faster than I expected. So I'm assuming that means you caught the silver bug. Yeah, I think I caught a whole jar of silver bugs. And, uh, <laughs> you know, every time I turn around, I'm, I'm, I'm after some. Um, so another question I have for you, kind of looking at what you have on your on your desktop there. Um, yep. What I'd love to understand a little bit more is why did you buy the pieces that are on your desk there? What are some of the reasons you picked the coins that you coins and rounds and and bars that you have out there? Um, why did you pick those to display today? And what what do those mean to you? Well, um, to be honest with you, the Batman one I don't display it very often because the box I keep it in I actually don't get a hold of very often. So. I figured this one, a lot of folks haven't seen them. Um, you know, the folks in the regular stacking community have, but uh, your general public just hasn't seen something like this. So I do like to show this from time to time. Um, but my other ones, they're just my most recent recent things. Um, you know, I got this in a trade with Raven. And of course the, the ball, I you know, I poured. And this one, uh, the dragon here, this one I really love. Uh, this was a trade oh, with cool. Akadaka Stacker. Okay. And, um, then of course I got the the channel round from the Perth Mint. This was sent to me by Akka. So I'm trying to display this in almost all my videos. I really, really love this piece. But uh, yeah, it's it's hard to figure it out. You never know when I'm going to set up. Um, a lot of times I do my videos at work. I'm at home today, but so I'll take you know 40, 50, 60 ounces of silver with me at work, so that I will have. Because sometimes I'll film multiple videos and I'll just have plenty of stuff because I don't want every video to have the same stuff in it. Oh, that's great. And, um, you know, one of the things I've loved about stacking is there's it, there's such a variety. I had no idea when I got started a few years ago. Um, you know, you've got coins that uh, that range anywhere from, you know, very common coins like a, like an eagle. This is one that I have that I'll show show you guys a little bit later, too, that's... It's totally me. I'm a big, huge Star Wars guy, um, but it's a Death Star, and um, oh, that's I think sweet. they only made something like 500 or 200 of these. I don't know. There's not too many, and I've got two of them, so I'm actually thinking of of uh, maybe sending one or two of them in for grading at some point. Um, but those are the one ounces, and then they just recently came out three ounces that are kind of fun. But there's such variety in uh, coins and rounds out there and bars that it's pretty cool. 
Another question I have before we get to that is, um, okay, I wrote a few questions down here for you. So what, what convinced you or what got you into that process of thinking, hey, I'm going to go start a YouTube channel? I never really wanted to be, you know, a channel for folks to watch. I never expected anybody to find the videos in the first place. I just wanted to okay. have um, basically something I can go back to over the years and look back and watch my progress. Uh, I think that's awesome. So for me, um, you know, what I love hearing about that is you, you basically started off as a journal. And it yeah, turned into exactly. it turned into like, almost like a you. diary, yeah. Yeah. And so at what point did you start to understand like were you already watching YouTube channels on stackers when you started that channel or was that something you found out after you started creating it? Um, yeah, um, I had found uh, the, of course the big one was Yankee. Um, he was really my uh, my inspiration to start the channel itself. Um, not so much as a YouTube channel, but you know as a documentary for myself. Um, but yeah, I was watching uh, Yankee and I had been watching uh, Silver Dragons, of course. But I had also found folks like Constitutional Stacker and uh, Me and Conscious Stacker started nearly the same day. And I found him within a couple of days of starting mine. And uh, I mean, there's a lot of them um, like Scully. Uh, I really enjoyed watching Scully. And uh, <clears throat> then, then, then you've got the, you know, the, the good old... Uh, strategic and uh his videos really really put some smiles because he he doesn't do it like anybody else he's really got uh, his stuff all of his own, all of his own i really enjoy it i think it's i i think that's true too and for me one of the things i found is uh you know i i've heard people get angry in the community that someone copied their idea um yep, first yep. off what i'll what i'll put out there is at least for me i don't have the time to watch everybody's you know, every single video that everybody puts out, there's just not enough time in the day to do that. Inevitably, we're going to create videos that are similar because our niche is pretty tight. Um, Correct. The other thing that I think is great is each of us have a different style and there's kind of a whole different thing. What I love about yours is it's about this journey you're going on and you're, you're exploring and developing into and who knows where that's going. And I saw in your, your latest videos, you're starting to, to look into gold and you've gotten your first piece of yes. gold. Um, which I think is pretty um, cool. Well, I actually got the first piece of gold several months ago by accident, but I've got a really good relationship with my LCS and yeah, he, he really takes care of me. So I'm going to go see him this Saturday. And if I'm lucky, I'd like to shoot for a quarter ounce of gold, but we got to see how the finances look on Friday. Okay. Well, the one thing I'll tell you and I'll tell everybody that's watching this too is um, it's really important not to overdo it. Um, you guys have got to make sure you've got your money to take care of <clears throat> your expenses, right? And exactly. to me, to me, really what you're looking at as far as a budget goes with either silver or gold or both um, comes down to what would you normally be putting away in the bank as savings? And instead of putting it in the bank as savings, you're going to take it, you're going to buy gold and silver with it and put it into a you know, secure place. Um, that's really the first best way to do it. Um, this stuff can be addicting just like anything else can maybe not uh, uh yes, physically addicting but psychologically <laughs> right and emotionally addicting to where you get on these auctions and you're like i'm going to beat that guy or i'm going to get that because i want it you know be careful on how much you're paying for things um as well as how much you're taking down at a given time um right now we may be at the lowest we're going to see gold and silver ever again and at the same time you know I've heard in the past that we're going to have an everything crash here soon. Sometime this year, it still hasn't happened. And if we have an everything crash, maybe the price of gold and silver goes down quite a bit further and you have even more buying opportunities. So I always think it's my advice I'd give to you too on that is um, if it looks right and you can do it, then do it. Otherwise, maybe you pull back and you do another tenth of an ounce. Um, and, you know, I think it's more important to make sure you're not putting yourself into too tight of a situation. I have... I've done that before and it's not good and you have to kind of dig yourself back out of it a little bit. Um, what's your goal now that you've gone from a, having this be more like a journal or a, uh, a diary to uh, you're making a lot more videos and you're obviously growing the channel and I think you're, you're starting to look at things like a channel round or stickers because um, you've, you've got those. Um, you know, what, what have you set as a goal now? So originally this was more of just a, a diary. What is your channel now? Do you have a goal of, of monetizing it? Do you have a goal of hitting a thousand subscribers? Do you want to hit fifty thousand, a hundred thousand? Are you 
Are you hoping this may become something bigger for you, or do you think it's just going to stay as a little bit more of a hobby? Well, it's, it's definitely gone beyond a hobby. And I do remember in my first video, one of the first things I said was, I'm not looking to get a million subscribers. And I'm not. I don't think, you know, that I would ever even come close to that. But uh, right now, the reasonable goal for me is a thousand. Um, we're not too far away from that. And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're pushing for that one right now. And hopefully we can get there in no time. But, you know, we're just going to let things go at its pace. And, uh, you know, God willing, we'll reach it. I think it's great. And I, I would agree. Getting to a million would be insanely incredible and awesome. <laughs> um, but it's not even something I can totally think about right now. I've got some baby steps before that, and you're probably feeling the same way. <clears throat> I've got a question here from the Modern Stacker. He's asking thoughts on silver stacking versus gold stacking. Uh, well, it all just depends on your finances, really. Myself, um, I have definitely focused on the silver. That fits my budget better. Uh, right now, I've pulled back on my silver to focus on gold because I do want to get an ounce of gold before I hit my year mark. So I've got a few months to get to reach that. So instead of, you know, buying four or five ounces of silver in, in a week's time or something, I might buy one. Um, so for me, I, I, I think it's all about your budget. Um, you know, it's like you said earlier, you don't want to overextend because uh, that's a good way to put yourself into a big old hole. And then you got to turn around and sell what you worked so hard to get. So, you know, if you've got the extra money to, to get the gold, then go that route. But if not, just, you know, just focus on your silver and, you know, just set a little bit aside as you can for your gold. I think that is a, I think that is a great idea. Um, <laughs> we've got a question from Ellie about, uh, to, to Surfer, to me, about thoughts on where this silver and gold price is going to go by the end of the year. So we're going to talk about that in a few minutes, a little bit more detail. But what I'll tell you is there's... Um, there's three probabilities right now, and then I'll get into it at the end here if you guys stay to the end on why I think this. But um, there is a possibility that the prices are exactly where they're at right now on December 31st. Um, it's also possible that the Fed does start raising interest rates again, and we could see the price of gold and silver um, go down, especially if they do what's called a rug pull and they actually raise rates by like, say a, a whole point or a whole hundred basis yep. points or a whole interest rate that would freak out silver. That would freak out gold. And I guarantee you the prices would go down. Um, you'd probably, in my opinion, I think you would see silver down below, um, $20 on the spot. And I think you would see the gold spot price down below 1800 bucks. Um, it could go lower than that guys. But keep in mind, if it goes much below, uh, I think it's 18 on silver, and I want to say it's around 1600 on gold. If it were to go below those dollar amounts, no one's mining this, these metals anymore. The mines shut off and yep. stop. Um, no yep. one's going to be exploring, and they're ac they're actually not really exploring that much any anyway. And about 30% of the workforce in mining is about to retire here real soon in the next couple of years. So um, inevitably. The price is going higher. The hard thing is to predict exactly when it's going to do that. I thought the Fed would be already above 6% on the Fed funds rate. Um, I was calling for that and more in June because it's what they need to do to slow inflation down. Um, but it's also something that's going to really hurt our country. So I don't know. It's going to be a hard one. But we are going to talk a little, a little bit more about that um, towards the end of the show. <laughs> so we got Tex, Tex Coin. Welcome to the chat. We've got him asking a question here to you on... Um, uh, you're, you mentioned your daughter earlier in the stream. Is there a specific type of silver she likes to collect? Are you currently working on putting a collection together? Well, I have to say she's 17. She actually, she actually turns, uh, her and I both have birthdays within the next week. Um, she'll be 18 and, uh, she likes it. She did recently, um, when we went up to the coin show, she picked up that dragon coin. That's absolutely gorgeous. And she has a few pieces, um, but, uh, you know, she doesn't get a whole lot so far, but she does every time we go somewhere, you know, I want, I'm going to a show she wants to go. She's always finding some cool pieces. So she does have a few, but uh, not a whole lot yet. Um, but I'm pretty sure when she uh, she's getting ready to start working here soon and uh, she's going to start setting aside to buy some coins. And I think it's pretty awesome. I'm trying to get my son and my other daughter, too, but uh, I haven't got them to, to look at it too much yet. Um, Ellie mentioned oh, that yeah. she's got one of my stickers on her checkbook, so I thought that's funny. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I like the 
yours is gonna your magnet's gonna go up on on one of my safes. I've got I got a lot of safes, so it'll be going on on one of my safes where I put all my magnets on there. Um, so we'll um, have that one out there. Well, I've got um, I've got a few. I get my lighting's kind of bad in here right now. Let me see if I can turn a light on. Yeah, there you go. I've got a few here. There you go. So I so I do keep all the magnets that everybody sends me, and they go and it goes on this safe anyway. And uh, so, yep, I always try and make sure that I display them so that I can see them, because uh, it's it's awesome when you guys send this kind of stuff. It's it's just great mementos. Um, Alan Hall was asking, what is your favorite low cost online dealer for silver? I'm currently not buying online because it costs me too much money to buy online. So. I've been sharing all these great deals with you guys on silver. It makes me feel good to share it with you because I can't buy them. Um, anything under $2,000, I have to pay sales tax. And my sales tax is just shy of 8%. So that basically kills any kind of a gold purchase unless it's over $2,000. Um, you know, Any kind of fractional gold is not going to make any sense to add 8% to it. And even with silver, unless it's that spot, it still kind of makes it a, not a great deal because it's over, it's, it, it gets into like 30 bucks all of a sudden. So today on Reuters, um, it says the Fed keeps rates steady, toughens policy stances, soft landing hopes grow. I, I do want to ask you, um, too, your thoughts on this um, silver journey, but gold and silver have not kept up with inflation and they usually don't until after the Fed rate lowers interest rates so when you see interest rates starting yeah. to drop and the fed has gone from holding it to lowering the interest rate that's when i would get ready to start seeing gold and silver start popping um you're probably not going to have a lot of time there to uh to hurry and buy as prices start going up if we have a crazy black swan event you could see prices go up overnight or within a 24 per- 24 hour period of time um what do you think silver journey what do you think I, I'm so new to this. I really don't uh, know how to read it correctly. But um, I know if you just, uh, uh, I guess the way to say it is, uh, you know, if when in doubt, zoom out. That's what I've heard. So you go look at your charts and you zoom out. And uh, you can see the patterns over the last 50, 60 years. And eventually everything just keeps going up. So whether it's going to go up now or whether it's going to go up later, it is going to. So, you know, it's just a matter of you having the patience and when it falls back, not, not be scared and sell all your stuff. When it falls back, that's the time to buy. I completely agree with that. And um, I, I like your strategy that you'd come up to with buying ounces at a time, kind of in a slow fashion, right? A little bit each time. Yep, yep. Um, I think that's very smart. Um, you know, it's tricky for people to get a lump sum of money. For those of us that don't have the lump sum right now, I think the main thing to do is um, is find out what you can, you know, what you can spend to. I shouldn't say spend what you can convert into gold and silver right now that you're comfortable with. You know, it's still just money, and and, and uh, yeah, it's money. So I don't uh, I don't get too attached to any given thing, um, but my Star Wars stuff is the last to go. <laughs> I like that stuff. <laughs> well, that's what I keep telling my children. I'm not when I'm buying this stuff. I'm not spending my money. I'm converting my my cash into money, so it's still money. I still have it. You know, it's still there. Um, but for me, it turns into a stopgap when it comes to my impulse buying, and it's enabled me to be able to save money a whole lot better. So, yeah, yeah, it's just money converted to money. Yeah, I totally agree. And you know, the other thing that I think is kind of funny too is. Um, Everybody uses the terms incorrectly, right? So, you know, <laughs> currency, money, cash, everything means different things. So, um, yep. you know, one of the things that I'm looking forward to doing, and I saw, can you, do you have your gold backs on there you can show? I don't have any of mine. In um, of yeah, I've got all of them sitting right here. Let me just move a couple of things out of the way real quick. Okay, They're we're going go to go off to the left. view of yours real quick here. And I do have. Okay, them. there you guys go. You can kind of Turn see them there. Just a little bit. So, I don't know about you guys, but I'm like, I think the gold backs are really cool. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I'm not going to get a thousand of them and burn them. I know someone keeps messaging me that. Um, it would be like $3,600 to go get that and then burn them. And I would end up with about 
uh, $1,900 at gold, which I don't want to do. That's the Wyoming one. That's cool. I haven't seen Wyoming yet. I like that. And um, what I think is really cool about the gold backs, though, that I'll point out to everybody is there's there's such cool art on them. And it's 24 karat gold, so the stuff is really shiny, right? And a picture and a video can't even do justice to it. But um, I think these are great to have in, like, an emergency pack. Put some of these in your glove box and lock your, lock your glove box in case you ever need to deal with them. And I think they're great for um, emergencies. Um, I, I personally would put these up there with Constitutional Junk Silver as a, uh, as a good way for bartering, too. And just so you guys know, you're not going to go barter with your neighbor with a silver quarter, dime, or half dollar and expect them right off the bat to know what the real value of that stuff is. You're going to have to share that information with them. And it's going to be the same thing with gold backs. They're not going to know how to value that. You're going to have to kind of help them understand that and, and show them the value. Um, silver journey. So we've got some people saying they don't go to movies anymore so they can stack silver and they're not going to Starbucks anymore to stack silver. Have you cut back on any of your own personal expenses so you can afford more silver? Absolutely. Um, like I said earlier, you know, I intended on getting one a week and now I can, you know, get quite a bit more than that on a regular basis. Um, you know, I don't eat out um, as often. And when I do, um, you know, I try and go something that's a little more budget friendly. Um, I, 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 sadly, I have to say that one thing is just going out in general. I pretty much now just, uh, I go to work and I go home. <laughs> um, so my frivolous spending, I've really cut back my frivolous spending and it's made a huge difference. So, um, yeah, I've been able to, you know, multiply that one ounce of silver. Like a few weeks ago, um, I got somewhere around, I think 16, 17 ounces in a week. So, um, it can definitely make a difference. Silver Journey, what holidays or um, excuses do you use to share a piece of silver with your kids? I use Easter, birthday, half birthday, Christmas, and we'll add Halloween this year. Um, actually, none. Um, we I haven't even thought about using any kind of silver um, with holiday kind of thing yet. Um, I have decided that that's going to be the birthday gifts, um, you know, d depending on, you know, the time of the time of the year and, you know, finances and whatnot, we'll decide on what I can afford to get them. But definitely every birthday, all my kids will get silver. Um, but, uh, I think with my granddaughter, she's, you know, I'm 45 and, you know, I'm just now becoming a granddad, which some folks would call that early, but, um, I'm going to do a lot of that stuff with her as she grows. Um, my, my youngins, they're all grown. So, you know, getting it to, uh, getting it to take in their head is going to be a little more difficult. Uh, but I'm going to try, but with my granddaughter, absolutely. I'm going to do it with all the holidays, the birthdays, anything that has any kind of a special meaning. I'm going to add silver into it. I think that's great. Okay. You know what? There's a couple more questions for you. Do you have a few more minutes? Uh, yeah, I'm perfectly fine. Okay. So we got another question on, uh, from Ellie. She's asking, uh, you specifically, can gold backs be used in all states? No. Um, in fact, you yourself recently did an interview um, with one of the guys at, uh, at Goldback and did a lot of information about that. Um, and they were even talking about there's some other stuff that can't give any details yet about other states that might be doing it. Hey, Yankee, what's going on, man? Um, but uh, yeah, right now it's just five states and uh, they're hopefully going to be bringing on some others. But you know, laws have to be put in place for things to be done correctly and whatnot. So, but I would suggest go back. Um, what was it last week or so, Surfer, when you did your video, um, the interview, and you've got she'll get a lot of her answers in that video. Yeah, you, you, what, here's what I found from this whole process with Goldbacks. There's five states you can use it in right now. I think there's two or three more they're working on at the moment. Um, they wouldn't tell me the names of what states they were. Um, but they're getting it into more states. And I think we'll start to see Goldbacks will probably line up more with red states than blue states. And you'll probably see more and more of that happening. Um, you can use them in California, for example, but you've got to find a business owner that you can spend some time talking to that's willing to take them. So you're probably going to be running into a business owner that understands gold and silver. So I know yeah. talking to OC Stacker, like there's a car, couple car dealerships around here that will take gold and silver for a car. Um, they may not keep that's all the awesome. gold and silver. They have people that will come and trade them the gold and silver for fiat. And they may do the same thing with gold backs. 
So that'd be interesting. Now, what I don't know is if someone out of those states is going to take take you at your word, or even looking at the website at the four dollar exchange rate or roughly around that. So that would be interesting. Yep. I know in the video you did in the interview, they were talking about that、uh, if somebody could tear one, they would give them like four hundred of them or something like that. What was that all about? I can't remember the details. Yes,、yeah, so we we've got to go find someone that is really、um, strong in the community, and see if we can get them to tear <laughs> the thing in half.、Um, even in those five states, you cannot use gold backs everywhere. So I went to Lowe's and they had no idea what they were. That was in my video, but I went to another hardware store, Ace. I think it was All Reds Ace in、um, Alpine, Utah, and、um, they did take the gold backs, and it was integrated into their POS system, which was really cool. Oh, there's the silver back. So I don't actually have a silver back. I tried to win. I put in tons of entries, and then、um, I don't know if they're still selling them. Do you know if they're still selling them? Actually, they released another another run of them, and you can get them. I've seen them. I don't remember which site had them, but you can get them for like ten bucks a piece right now. But that's one one thousand troy ounce of silver. So that's 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 the the craziest、uh, premium you'll ever find. <laughs> so that's an insane premium, you guys. That's a piece of art. So you're you're buying that to be a cool thing to display.、Um, Correct. And that's it. Yeah. There's no other reason to do that now. The fact that you guys know silver dragons and stuff like that is probably cool enough just to to buy one of those. I think that's awesome that he was able to get that put together.、Um, yes,、yeah, it's, it's it's got his logo and his name on it, so they de they definitely made this for him. Yeah, I think that's awesome. Well, let's do this. I've got to start winding it down here.、Um, I've I've enjoyed the time with you. It's been great to ask you a few questions and get to know you a little bit better. And、um, yeah, I think it's been it. awesome to be able to take a look at your stacks. So we're gonna.、Um, I, I want to thank you for that, and I also want to thank you for the friendship and for all the awesome stickers. So we've got all of these cool stickers that just came in.、Um, so tell me about. I'm just realizing there's numbers on the back of here. What's the significance of that? <laughs> well, I never, I never intended on having a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, if anybody that uses Sticker Mule knows, you get those. Messages all the time about a deal、yep. for fifty of these or a deal for fifty of these, and so like the white ones, I only ordered one set of fifty,、um, and I'm not going to order anymore.、Um, the magnets, that particular magnet, I only ordered one set of fifty, so I'm not going to order.、Anymore. So I, I just numbered it so you know if you get one,、um, you'll know which one in the list because I'm not going to order that particular one again. The only one I'll order multiples、uh, of is the is the the original. I've got my community books where I'm keeping everybody's stickers and and any letters or anything. So I've got a book for those. I've got a book for the poker chips. I've got a book for the baseball cards, and you know they're, they're keepsakes. Those are great memories. As I get older, you know I can always、um, you know go back and see all the direct interactions I've had with folks. It's just it's just a keepsake. Well, I hope you liked that, and if you did, remember to like and subscribe, comment down below, let me know what you think. I do look forward to hanging out and doing something like that with him again. It was a lot of fun, and as always, remember to follow along on my silver journey. We'll see you in the next one. God bless.